Hi there, my name is Cyrus and I'm from PAN, the Physicians Association for Nutrition. Now in last week's video we talked about the background and the methods of the first long-term randomized double-blind placebo-controlled trial investigating the effects of daily blueberry consumption on cardiovascular health. If you haven't watched this video yet, I encourage you to check that out first because today we're going to take a closer look at the results of the study. In total, 115 of the 138 participants who started out the study went on to complete the whole six months. Intervention adherence was pretty high with around 94% compliance, which was measured with returned wrappers and unused sachets of the blueberry powder. Double blinding also worked out quite well with 82% of the participants being unable to judge which treatment group they belong to. Also, their general dietary intake and physical activity levels did not differ between baseline and six months, meaning that those two variables were no confounding factors. Okay, so the design of the study seems to have worked out quite well. Now let's see what actually changed for the participants. For the primary outcome concerning insulin resistance and glucose homeostasis, no favorable effects of the intervention were shown. Likewise, peripheral, hepatic and adipose tissue insulin sensitivity, which was measured in a small subgroup, remained unchanged. However, endothelial function noticeably improved. After consuming one cup of blueberries daily for six months, Flow-mediated dilation significantly increased and arterial stiffness was significantly reduced. Similarly, mean plasma cyclic GMP concentrations were increased following the one cup intake. We'll get to the meaning of this increase in cyclic GMP later in the discussion part of the study. Now when it comes to the effects on blood lipids, one cup of blueberries increased HDL cholesterol levels by 0.04 millimoles per liter, which resulted in a 0.06 millimoles per liter improvement compared to the placebo group. When the 44 statin users were excluded, a significant 0.08 millimoles per liter or 3 milligrams per deciliter net difference in HDL cholesterol concentrations was observed. These partial HDL measurements with only the statin non-users actually make sense because statins themselves already increase HDL cholesterol, so when you exclude them you can more clearly see what the blueberries actually did. Now with participants starting at 1.2 millimoles per liter, the 0.08 millimoles per liter increase actually translates to a 6 to 7% increase in HDL cholesterol which interestingly is the same effect size that you get from leading statin drugs such as atorvastatin or rosuvastatin. In addition to that, both apolipoprotein A1 and HDL particle number were significantly increased in the one cup group compared with the placebo. Now this is important because apolipoprotein A1 or ApoA1 is a crucial component of HDL. It activates a lecithin cholesterol acyl transferase. This enzyme converts free cholesterol into cholesterol esters, which are more hydrophobic than cholesterol itself and can be packed into HDL particles. This way, cholesterol can be transported from peripheral tissues, such as the arteries, where it can cause atherosclerosis, back to the liver. This process is called reverse cholesterol transport and is a key mechanism in reducing the risk of cardiovascular disease. In addition to this change in lipid profile, the researchers also found that total metabolites of anthocyanins, the bioactive compounds present in blueberries that actually give them their dark blue color, increased in a dose-dependent manner in both serum and 24-hour urine. All right, so quite a lot of things changed in the one-cup blueberry intervention group. Now, if you're interested in finding out why these research findings are highly clinically relevant, I encourage you to subscribe to our YouTube channel. And as a little peek preview for next week's study telegram, I would also highly encourage you to already incorporate this one cup of blueberries into your daily diet. Until then, I wish you the best of health and happiness.